Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here. Before I start, I wanted to just dedicate this essay speaks to my mother-in-law, Mari Diaz. She passed away from ALS two years ago today. I wish she was still here, but I know she's an angel watching over all of us. I was born a student affairs professional. Actually, I was born in the Dominican Republic. I came here when I was one, actually, almost one, and I didn't come here, I was brought here, because where was I going at almost one? I grew up in the Bronx, in the Highbridge Projects, and the Yankee Stadium was my train stop. So of course I'm a Yankee fan, I had to be. This is the house where my mother grew up with her 11 brothers and sisters in the Dominican Republic. And it reminds me of what could have been had my parents not taken a risk to come here to make a better life for us. I'm a first-generation Latina, and I grew up in a big family. This is just some of them. Whew. And what I think about is the opportunity that my parents created for us and how they wanted us to have a better life than they did. And they wanted us to have an education. And I've been very lucky to not only go all the way with my education, but to also be able to fulfill a life and work that I love in student affairs. My dad, who didn't go past the fifth grade, he was a cab driver, and he ended up being my tutor in college. I took a very difficult Latin America course, intro to Latin America course, at SUNY New Paltz, and I had to keep up with current events. And I was like, how am I gonna do that? We didn't have Wikipedia, we didn't have Google, Back in the day, we actually didn't even have email. I'm that old. But what I did have was the phone in the hallway that I can call my dad once a week and say, ¿Qué está pasando en Colombia, Nicaragua, Panama? And he read the newspaper every day, and he would tell me what's going on. And by the end of the semester, he actually collected a bunch of articles for me and helped me with my final project. And I got an A in that course. And if there are any SUNY New Paltz alum in this room who are black studies, or Latin American studies, you know how hard it was to get an A in Dr. Zelbert Moore's class. But my dad helped me get that A. My mom, who also didn't get far in her education, she also didn't go past fifth grade, had high expectations for me and my siblings. She had such high expectations for us that when we started getting our bachelor's degree, then our master's degree, she raised the expectations for all our friends. She would ask, ella tiene su master. ¿Y por qué no? Ella es vaga. She was saying, do they have their master's degree? What are they, lazy? Why not? Everyone should have one. That's my mom. And we were scared of her, just to go back for a second. We were scared of my mom, and I'm actually still scared of her, and she just turned 80. So you know, our expectations were high, and we were going to meet them come hella high water. My mom finally understood, or I think she had a sense of what I do, when she saw me on TV the day that Hofstra University hosted one of the presidential debates back in 2016. I was on Telemundo just explaining what we were doing for the day, and my mom called me and said, Te vi en la televisión. I saw you on TV. I heard what you were saying about what you do at Hofstra. I was like, okay, do you understand what I do? No, but it sounds great. <laughs> I'm sure many of you are still trying to explain to your families what you do. So, as you can see, these are my siblings, and we had very high expectations, like I said before, and we all worked really hard to get where we are, and many of us have our master's degrees and, have, and are all professionals at this point. My parents were very proud of us and still are. I, again, was born to be a student affairs professional, and in student affairs is where I've learned all the skills I need for life and work, especially around crisis management, but before I start with that, and there's some stories I want to tell, I want to tell you how I'm a natural fit for student affairs. I was the bossy one in the family. I posted this picture on Facebook, and my sister made a comment, it figures, Sophia, that even back then you're trying to take control of the situation and trying to turn me around to pose for this picture. I was the one in the family who was always planning the events. Event planning was in my DNA. I was also the one whose parents would ask, is Sophia going? before they would give permission to their kids. For some reason, they trusted me. Also, I did a dishes duty schedule back in the day. 
since there were five of us, there were five days of the week, we rotated weekends. And I posted that right over the sink because I wanted to make sure it was fair. So I've been doing duty schedules and being an RA before I was an RA back at SUNY New Paltz, which is where I got my start. And what I've learned is that in student affairs, I've learned what I need to know to be able to handle not just the fun stuff, but the tragic events that our crisis management skills teach us to handle. My first tragic event that I had to handle as a student affairs professional was on January 19, 2000. At Seton Hall University, we had a fire, and we lost three students that day. We also had 60-plus injuries. And one in particular that I remember so well is Dana Christmas. She's on the bottom right there. I'm so proud of her. She was an RA who needed to get her girls out. So 60% of her body was burned. However, she's married. She has two beautiful children. She got her master's in divinity. She continued. She persisted. And she finished. And my mother would be proud. Ella tiene su master. So Dana teaches me how you need to persist. And no matter what happens, you need to continue on. What I also learned from this Seton Hall experience was I'm part of a student affairs family that's there for each other no matter what. What I remember, aside from needing to look at our policies for, for fire safety and look at our sprinkler systems, because as we know, many things changed in the United States because of this fire, I also learned the support network that we are created. I remember just in crisis mode, putting students in hotels, taking care of families, talking to people. And I was an assistant director for Residence Life at the time, so I was doing operations behind the scenes. And people just kept coming from different institutions. They didn't ask. They just showed up. And that's what we do in student affairs. We don't ask. We show up, and we do what we have to do to help each other. And that was amazing. And at that time, I really realized that I was part of something greater, with a greater purpose. That in my own life, I had my own tragedy. On November 12, 2001, I lost my father on a plane, in a plane crash. He was on flight 587, headed from JFK to Dominican Republic. And I remember that day so clearly. It was a clear day, just like 9-11 was a clear day. And I went into crisis mode, and I knew at the time I just had to do what I had to do. I was mourning. That was my dad, of course. But I knew that I needed to be the one in the family to step in. I went home to my parents' house, and I gathered his things, because I said, my thinking at the time was, I need his DNA samples so that they could identify him sooner, so that I could have closure for my family sooner. That's what I was thinking. I did all the paperwork. I did everything I had to do. And I know I learned that in student affairs. Another thing that I, I learned and I remembered was, at my father's funeral, I saw all these people from Student Affairs just show up. They didn't ask. They just showed up. I'm looking at VPs, deans, AVPs, and I'm going, these people care. What are they doing here? My work-life blend was happening. But what I realized that just like with the Seton Hall thing, with this thing, it's all blended anyway. And they were there for me. And we persisted as a family. Now let me tell you how Student Affairs saved my family. You're wondering, how is that? Uh, diversity training actually saved my family. But first, I need to tell you about my life partner, Antonio Pertus. He is the backbone of my family. Many people ask me, how do you do it all? You have a demanding job. You're super involved in professional development. And you finish your doctorate. How do you do it? How? It's pretty simple. It's my life family. It's the way that my family works that makes that possible. Again, my partner is the backbone of the family. And despite us needing to explain to our families what our lifestyle is about, because it's really hard in Latino families to understand that la mujer, the woman, is going to be the one that's going to work. And el hombre, the man, is going to be the one that takes care of the family at home. That took some time. But this is where we landed with our family. And these are our beautiful offspring, my daughter's favorite word, Ariana and Joaquin. 
They are the most wonderful two children you're going to meet, and I just absolutely love them. But this could not have happened without my life partner being there to make sure that they're cared for and they learn everything they need to learn. So you're wondering, how did this diversity thing help exactly? OK, I'm going to tell you now. So I went to this session, and I learned about the platinum rule. We're used to hearing about the golden rule. Treat others as you would like to be treated. When I heard about the platinum rule, treat others as they would like to be treated, it blew my mind. I got married in 2001, and when you get married, you learn about some, some things, right? You start living with someone, or you partner with someone, and you're like, oh, OK. They do things the wrong way. <laughs> they put the dishes the wrong way. They put the, the food away in the fridge the wrong way. And you figure out things that you just, it's not the way you would do things. But what I learned from the platinum rule is that nobody has to do things the way that you do. You have to see everyone for who they are and what they bring. So I learned that. And I learned to really accept my partner and accept him for who he is and what he does. It's OK that he puts the dishes away or the utensils in the upside down. That's fine. And I wish for everyone that they could have someone in their life that's there for them and tells them they can do anything. I feel really lucky that I have that. So finally, what Student Affairs has also taught me about persistence is that you need to use your resources and reach out to whoever you need and whatever you need to make your goals happen. And finally, after a long journey, I got my PhD last year. It was really long. Anybody who knows me knows that was just part of my identity, being a doctoral student. So I don't even know what to do with myself having finished. I'm like, what? I've, I've been a student for so long. But what I did was I made sure that I did create a network for myself. And I did reach out for help. So I did create that group that Delmi was talking about, Latinas completing doctoral degrees. And it has 4,000 members who support each other. That group in the middle there, we created from that group a writing group, a dissertation writing group, where we supported each other. And I'm happy to say that all of them, all of us are doctoras now. One fear I have, though, one fear I have is that my mother's going to be like, ella tiene su doctorado, y por qué no? So she's going to raise those expectations and, you know. So I had a really supportive dissertation committee. I couldn't ask for a better group. And I had people there at my dissertation defense that were there to help me and really cheer me on. My mom wrote me a letter. She didn't understand what I was talking about, but she wrote me a letter just telling me how, how proud she is. She didn't fully understand, but she knew how significant this was, not just for our family, but for Latinas everywhere. My sister, who's soon to be doctora herself, was there. My sister friend Jennifer, my colleague Tara Hart, my mentor and early supervisor Lynn Riker was there, and that was amazing for me. And Omaira Arrocho, and this is full circle student affairs, Omaira Arrocho was one of my RAs back in the day at Seton Hall, and she graduated with me last year which was pretty awesome. And of course, my family was there. They were there the whole time. This is their doctorate as much as it's mine. So what have I learned from student affairs? And how student affairs teaches you how to handle all things in life, bad, good, all of it. I've learned that you can persist if you use all your resources, if you are willing to learn and willing to struggle. Because in that struggle is when you learn. And it's not a bad thing. This is my daughter. She's a black belt. I hope she always goes for her goals. She's a, she's a black belt, like I said. And I hope she's always this fierce and confident. That's what I wish for everyone. And my final thought is persistence, of course. My friend Kathy Arati Van Essen was a student with me in the doctoral program at Seton Hall. And she gave me the sign along the journey and said, you look like you need some kind of reminder to put over your desk. And she gave me this sign. She was there for me. She supported me. And like Student Affairs, we look out for each other. We encourage each other. And because of her and because of so many around me, I persisted. Thank you for letting me share my journey with you.